One of the most enigmatic and powerful visions ever recorded in scripture begins with a vast, desolate valley filled with dry, dusty bones. Total silence, not even a whisper of wind. But then, out of nowhere, a sound emerges. Bones begin to rattle, muscles and skin form, and in moments, an entire army stands, alive and breathing. Sounds like a scene from a horror movie, right? Yet, this is no fiction. It's a powerful and mysterious vision from the book of Ezekiel, one of the most overlooked books in the Bible. And the most astonishing part? This ancient vision holds a hidden key to your life today. You're about to discover the hidden power behind Ezekiel's vision. A power not just for Israel, but a key to spiritual revival in our lives today. Centuries ago, during one of the darkest moments in Judah's history, the mighty city of Jerusalem faced its downfall. The Babylonian Empire, led by King Nebuchadnezzar, laid siege to the city, tearing down its walls and taking its people into captivity. The streets once bustling with life became desolate, and the temple, once the center of the nation's identity, lay in ruins. It was a time of despair and uncertainty. It felt like the nation had lost everything, its city, its king, and even its hope. Ezekiel, a young priest turned prophet, was among the first wave of captives taken to Babylon. Torn from his homeland and all that he knew, Ezekiel was far from Jerusalem, far from the temple where he had once ministered. But it was in this foreign land amidst the disorienting reality of exile, that God reached out to him in an extraordinary way. As the city of Jerusalem fell, Ezekiel's visions became even more intense. He was tasked with delivering messages of warning and hope to a broken people. But then came the vision that would change everything, the Valley of Dry Bones. Imagine standing in a vast, silent wasteland, where the weight of history lingers in the air. All that remains are bones, dusty and brittle, spread across the valley floor. A grim reminder of a nation's lost glory. Ezekiel wasn't just another prophet. He was a man living through unprecedented turmoil. And he wasn't delivering his messages from the familiar streets of Jerusalem, but from the heart of a foreign empire. Babylon was a land of different gods, different customs, and a constant reminder of Israel's defeat. Yet, God's call on Ezekiel's life didn't diminish in exile. In fact, it intensified. God's messages to Ezekiel were not just about the present reality. They were visions that spoke to the soul of a nation and to humanity's deepest struggles. Ezekiel's vision of the dry bones didn't happen in the bustling city, but in the stillness of exile, where time seemed suspended and hope felt like a distant memory. At the same time, in Jerusalem, King Zedekiah faced his own reckoning. In a desperate bid for freedom, he rebelled against Babylon, attempting to reclaim control of the nation. But this act of defiance came with a steep price. Nebuchadnezzar's response was swift and brutal. Zedekiah was captured, and in an act meant to symbolize the totality of his defeat, his sons were killed before his eyes, ensuring that he saw the end of his lineage. Then, in a final gesture of cruelty, his eyes were gouged out, leaving him in darkness for the rest of his days. It was a stark reminder that the light of Judah's royal line had been extinguished. In the silence of exile, God's Spirit lifted Ezekiel and carried him to a vast, desolate valley. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Ezekiel 37 verse 1 The scene was haunting, bones scattered as far as the eye could see, dry and brittle, as if they had been abandoned for ages. He caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, 
and indeed they were very dry. Ezekiel 37 verse 2 The silence was so thick it felt like time had stopped. But what did this valley of bones represent? It wasn't just a physical place. It was a representation of Israel's spiritual state, a nation once full of life and promise, now reduced to remnants of what it had been. It reflected the hopelessness of a people who felt cut off from their land, their identity, and their God. In this eerie stillness, God spoke to Ezekiel. Son of man, can these bones live? The question wasn't just a challenge to Ezekiel's understanding. It was a challenge to his faith. Standing amidst such overwhelming evidence of death and decay, it would have been easy to doubt. And yet, Ezekiel didn't presume to know the answer. Instead, he replied with humility and reverence, O Lord God, only you know. Ezekiel 37 verse 3 It's a profound moment, reflecting a deep truth about faith. Sometimes, when we're confronted with situations that seem beyond hope, the most honest answer is to acknowledge that the outcome is in God's hands. This wasn't just about Ezekiel's understanding of the situation. It was about trusting in a power greater than what his eyes could see. Then came the divine command, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. Ezekiel 37 verses 4 to 5 Ezekiel, a man surrounded by silence and lifelessness, began to speak God's words. And as he did, something incredible happened. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and suddenly a rattling, and the bones came together bone to bone. Ezekiel 37 verse 7 The bones began to move, rattling and shifting, assembling themselves into skeletons. It was a sound that reverberated through the valley, a noise that signaled the beginning of something miraculous. But even as these bones came together and took on flesh, there was no breath in them. Ezekiel 37 verse 8 They were still not alive. They needed more than just structure. They needed the breath of life. God's spirit wasn't done. He gave Ezekiel a new command. Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. Ezekiel 37 verse 9. Here we encounter the word ruach. In Hebrew, Ruach holds multiple meanings. It signifies wind, breath, and spirit all at once. This isn't just about physical breath. It's about the divine essence that gives life and vitality. The bones had formed into bodies, but they needed God's spirit to truly live. As Ezekiel called upon the four winds, a breath of life swept through the valley. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived, and stood upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. Ezekiel 37 verse 10 The lifeless forms inhaled, and in that moment, life surged through them. These dry, lifeless bones were transformed into an exceedingly great army. It was a powerful display of renewal and revival, a testimony to God's ability to bring life from death and hope from despair. But why this vision? Why this dramatic display of dry bones coming to life? The answer goes beyond historical events. It reaches deep into the human experience. In our lives, we too face moments where we find ourselves standing in our own valleys of dry bones. Moments when hope feels distant and the spirit seems absent. We experience times of loss, brokenness, and spiritual emptiness, feeling disconnected from purpose and meaning. The message of Ezekiel's vision is clear. Revival is possible. 
But it doesn't begin with our efforts. It starts with the Word of God, a message of hope that calls us back to life. Yet, even the Word is not enough without the Spirit. It must be followed by a divine breath that breathes new life into our dry bones, restoring our faith and renewing our spirits. This vision isn't just about a distant past or a specific group of people. It's a powerful reminder that God's Spirit can enter any situation, no matter how hopeless it may seem, and bring about renewal. It's a call to let God's Ruach breathe life into the dead places in our lives and to trust in His power to restore what has been lost. As we continue to explore the mysteries of the Bible, remember that these ancient visions aren't just stories. They're invitations to experience divine renewal in our own lives. Thank you for joining us on this fascinating journey. If you found this video enlightening, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more insights into biblical stories and their hidden meanings.